at the individual level, you got to figure out LinkedIn and you got to figure it out the right way. Welcome to Sales Secrets with Brandon Bernanson. On The Daily, Brandon shares new secrets to help maximize sales and make more money today. Never miss a show by hitting the subscribe button now. They don't buy what the product does, they buy what the product does for them. And it's not the functionality, it's the side effects. Hello and welcome to Sales Secrets from the Top 1% where the world's best sales experts share their secrets to sales success. And I'm thrilled, honored, and grateful to have with me today, Mr. Chris Walker from Boston. Chris is the CEO at Refine Labs where he helps B2B companies grow revenue, shorten sales cycles, and lower their CAC cost to acquire customer. Chris has spent the last four years of his career perfecting this process at a number of fast growing companies and it works. If you're looking to grow fast and fill your pipeline, then Chris is your guy. Chris, thank you so much for joining us today. Brandon, what's up, man? Really happy to be here and appreciate the, uh, the kind words in the intro. That's really nice. Yeah, man. I love, I love connecting with, with, with people that, that are on our platform. I know you've been on the platform. I also love connecting with people that are doing a ton of great stuff out there in marketing and sales and on LinkedIn, dude. Some of your videos are my favorite where you're literally in this Boston penthouse <laughs> and you just shoot. No fake Zoom background, no bullshit. So I decided to follow your lead here. Nice. And, and do the exact same thing. Yeah. And all the, I, I think one interesting thing for the viewers is all the videos are 100% live talking to someone. So I never script anything. I'm never thinking about what to say. I just like live my life and talk to people and help them and then record it. God, that's smart. Hack. Yeah. It's, it's funny. We do the exact same thing here. Like just document what you do every day. Mm-hmm. It feels like to be, to be the easiest way to do it. But, um, okay. This shows about you. So, <laughs> I'm going to fire drill, you know, a few questions and then Mm -hmm. the audience, you know, by the way, the audience, we switched this up from a two hour show to like a 20 minute show to just get into the sales secret. That's what salespeople want. What can't, what's the secret that will make me more money today? So Chris Walker, CEO at Refine Labs, what is your sales background in a few sentences or less? Founder of early stage company. So I'm doing it. Like that, I mean, it, it really is that simple. Um, I've worked in large B2B companies, did sales enablement and re- went field rides with people. But in general, like I'm learning this on the fly and I'm figuring it out, which I think gives me a huge advantage actually, because I don't do all the dumb shit that people have been trained to do inside of SaaS companies. And so um, I'm kind of figuring it out. I get real time feedback. I think some of the stuff that I'll share is valuable. Yeah, that's awesome. And for the audience, you said you, you manage sales enablement. Where was that at? I obviously have it because yeah. I got your LinkedIn up. But A company called Vape, Vapotherm was the most notable. They, um, while I was there, grew from $26 million to $48 million and IPO'd. So um, pretty successful, large field organization, field sales organization and spent a lot of time out there. That's awesome, man. Okay. And what do you sell now? So we sell a consulting surface consulting, marketing consulting service with a media agency layered underneath it. Um, Deal sizes range from 100K to 250K. Typically, they can go higher than that. So like relatively um, large deals on annual contracts. And we predominantly sell to CMOs, VP marketing and head of demand at Series A plus, Series A to Series E um, SaaS companies. Got it. And then what's the average length of sales cycle? This one's like, going to be this one's going to be really interesting for people. It is thirty two days, thirty two days a, to sell a six figure deal. Okay, so you've like gotten the process down in the CRM just straight thirty two days on average. Thirty two days on average. That's awesome, man. And what what is your number one channel right now for leads, appointments, opportunities? LinkedIn and podcast, LinkedIn content marketing, not LinkedIn spam DM. Damn, I thought you were going to say LinkedIn spam DM. <laughs> uh, in awesome. our podcast. What's so your it, worst performing leads appointment sales channel? Um, we don't have one because we don't chase leads. Okay. Love it. Awesome. So, Chris, whole reason why everyone's here, your top sales secret, right? You've worked at some of the fastest growing startups mm-hmm. in the world. You're consulting some of the best uh, companies in the world to maximize growth. If you were to go back in time, give yourself one sales secret, 
to to generate millions and and make all of your goals and dreams a reality, what is your number one top sales secret? At the company level, marketing makes sales way easier and way faster. And so I know that to be true. You can see that in my deal cycle and, and my deal size. We have that figured out. The people are 95% of the way done. Like I've closed a $200,000 deal in four hours because I did all the marketing up front. And so um, I think at the company level, marketing makes sales way easier. At the individual level, you got to figure out LinkedIn and you got to figure it out the right way. And so we can spend most of the time talking about that because I think there's a lot of bad ways to do it. And I think there's a lot of good ways to do it. Um, I really do feel like the people listening, the, the, the path to a million dollars in income is on LinkedIn and whether you get to a million dollars in income at your current job or you build a brand and then go and figure out something else to do in order to make a million dollars with the brand that you've built, that is the path. Interesting. Okay. The path is via LinkedIn (sighs) selling, building relationships, or do you mean like marketing and ads on LinkedIn? What do you mean? I think content marketing. Content the shit mar- that you're doing with the video. The content record- marketing, build build an audience, um, attract, you know, if you are an expert in blah, 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 you can sell, you can build a side hustle with consulting on the side. You can create content around your exact ideal customer profile and then start connecting with them and then create, um, you know, transactions through that activity. Um, I think a lot of people do it and I kind of introduced it at the beginning of this talk is that a lot of people chase leads. And so it's this, this type of execution is not going to get you that, like that immediate, like gratification of I made the call and I got the meeting. And so I think that's why a lot of people shy away from it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like a long game, right? I mean, you and I, you and I have been doing it for a while. (laughs) Yeah. It's not, I mean, you know, it's not that long. Uh, We call it the long game. And I think that the results get bigger and better over time as you do it, which makes sense why it's a long game. Like, we're getting these types of results and I have 43,000 followers. So what's going to happen when I have 430,000? Yep. And so that's the interesting thing that I think about. If you think about it in a 10 year window, what it means for you. Um, But like I was putting content on LinkedIn for like 15 days. I would get (laughs) and got got like leads, like people that wanted to work with us. And I got some leads from comments that I left on like other people's posts. And so I think that, um, uh, the lack of, of attribution and then just kind of like the mentality. Fuck. Attribution's it's just, tough. It's just, it's just, I think there's, for whatever reason, I don't see a lot of people doing it this way. It's just fascinating to me. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, and when you say contact, you mean like the Gary V document share type of what model or whatever, man, whatever, um, whatever you can share that helps whoever you're going after be better whatever, or, or whatever they're interested in. Like all I'm looking for is people to appreciate the things that I'm saying, which then creates awareness about me, which then leads them to my profile, which then leads them to them understanding what I do, which then leads inevitably for some people to say, Hey, you know, we suck at demand gen. I could really use your help. Okay, sweet. And, and so the secret was like, you got a master leveraging LinkedIn. Say the secret again. We're like, we probably don't remember a word for word, but because I'm going to ask you, you know, if you had to break it down into like a 30 day plan, what yeah. would you, you know, for someone brand new, Hey, I, I just graduated we'll college. I got down. a SaaS software sales job or SDR an ad tech, job. Yeah. It's a tech job. Mm-hmm. Well, how do I start? Like if you hired someone, how would you teach someone to start for you? That was working for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So w- let's just get into it. Entry level SDR selling MarTech. Okay. So, and let's just, I love that. They're, Perfect. They're, selling, they're selling to CMOs. You know, they just came out of college. They don't know anything about what a, what a CMO is all about. So the first thing I would do is study. I would start connecting with a ton of CMOs. I would optimize my profile and change my headline. So it doesn't look like I'm going to immediately spam pitch them. So they actually connect with me. And so I would be like, you know, mark, marketing evangelist or lifelong learner or something to, to demonstrate that you want to learn from them so that they accept your connection requests so you can see their content. Um, and then I would start, you know, for probably seven days, just kind of hanging around, like looking, seeing what's going on, make 50 or 100 connections a day with those people, um, start getting into commenting. I think a really smart move for these types of people is asking questions in comments to learn the core is that if you're an entry level SDR and you're trying to sell to CMOs, you're probably going to need to learn something first. 
And so let's yep, just let's pretend, that that, let's pretend that the learning phase has been completed because I can beat that horse for a while. Yep. Um, and best, best play, number one best place to learn just real quick, in your opinion, like... I'm, I'm in between um, LinkedIn, a properly curated LinkedIn feed or one, really, one or two really good podcasts. Okay, cool. So, so anyone tuning in, there's, there's your way to kind of get in the head of the persona and the market. Mm-hmm. Uh, podcast, LinkedIn, curation, awesome. Yep. And then, okay, and then let's just say you're, you've covered this study. Yep. And then if I was that person, and I, I actually did this, so I'm not like giving advice that I haven't taken. I, I've done this multiple times when I didn't know, understand the persona well enough that I was selling to at the beginning, is I would ask to interview them. And I would record it and I'd be like, hey, you know, I did it with, uh, with doctors back in 2016. Like, hey, head of pediatric emergency medicine at Rainbow Children's Hospital. We started this podcast. You want to be our first guest? And there's people say yes. And then you get an hour of their time to learn and ask questions. Then you film the content and then you can use that content in direct outreach or you can post it on LinkedIn depending on how you want to approach it. Um, and then through those five, 10 conversations, you learn a lot more about the people that you're selling to. You understand their language. You start to see consistencies about what they're saying, which then gives you the ammo to then go and start to po- publish your point of view. And then I would start publishing my point of view on LinkedIn. You know, I talked to 10, 10 of the best, uh, emergency medicine doctors for pediatrics in the U S and here are the five things that I learned. I learned that they're messing up this. They wish they could do better on this. They're doing really well on this. They see this emerging technology that's growing and blah, 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 blah. And I would just, I would start actually just re-communicating my learnings of talking to the experts in the field. That's what I would do with an SDR. Yeah. It's wild. I love that. Yeah. Just literally these podcasts. Huh. That's incredible. It's, it's real um, different if you're an SDR and you're, it's, if you're selling to a persona that's not, not commercial, not sales and marketing, it starts to get really like that model works very well. If you're selling to sales and marketing, there might be some hacks to get it done faster. Um, but when you're selling to like the CFO and you're an SDR, like I think that the process that I just laid out is the quickest path to getting something done in a, in a content model, right? Like you can, you can bang the phones and use outreach and do those types of things, which are going to have, they're going to have tangible results. Enough people do them. Um, the question that we started with though, is how are you going to get to a million? And, you have, right. and it's going to be tough to get to a million that way as a 22 year old SDR, I feel like. Yeah. Think, top sales gotta, secret to go from break, zero to one. You got to break the model. Like that's, that's basically how I've built my career and this business is by looking at the stuff that people are doing that I just think is just not smart and trying to find ways that are more buyer centric and more effective that people don't see yet. And I just do those things and I do them wow. well and I forget the, the stuff that was doing before. So if I was an SDR and I was even my age right now, if I went into an SDR role, I would do nothing that my manager told me to do. Like, I think that most of this, the way that they're directed, I just think is not, it's, it's built to be like a machine, a super low efficiency machine and you're a cog in the machine. Wow. Yeah. I, I know some salespeople are going to have difficulty being like, Hey, I'm going to go against the grain and do this content creation engine. Totally. Where, where I interview, record, document, and share. Uh, another question that I'm sure people are going to ask is like, okay, once you record it, you, you, a lot of your videos are very beautifully designed and posted on LinkedIn. You know, wh- how do you do it? Wh- what's, what's your secret there for getting that done? Yeah. So um, at this point now I have someone on my team that does it, but we'll backtrack to when that didn't, that resource didn't exist. And um, I paid someone a hundred dollars an hour to do it. A hundred dollars an hour, you know, you can get a video or two done in an hour. And um, I decided that that was my own money. Like I, I was building a company the company wasn't very far. I didn't have another source of income. And I decided like, instead of spending that hundred dollars somewhere else, that's where I would put it. I was investing in the future. I was investing in myself. That's awesome, man. Okay. And then, uh, coming up with ideas of what to record or talk about, mm-hmm. what would you, what would you say? I like, a, I, I think just if you're going to Whoever, whatever persona, I love the idea of understanding what other people are saying initially and then c- communicating back your point of view or what you learned. Like, I really just do think that is the quickest way. And then over time, as you start doing the role, you can start having your own kind of like 
my points of view now are like through experimentation and different things that I'm figuring out on my own. But at the beginning, you kind of have to source from, from what other people are talking about. Okay. Awesome. And or then, or the, the, the document side works well, but you have to be, it has to be going to the exact same audience that you're going after. And so if I was a CFO and I was selling to CFOs and I was documenting being a CFO, it would make sense. But if I'm an SDR right. selling to CFOs, documenting my day would not make sense. You know? <laughs> no, you're like, okay, I'm going to cold call a CFO. It's like, I don't care. Yeah, it, it, it's so true, right? Oh my God. Yeah, I never thought about that. Um, that's pretty funny. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's not going to work. Okay, and then you know, what, what do you do? How do you stay motivated or get unstuck? It's almost like writing a book, the document mm-hmm. creation or the the coming up with the ideas to shoot or whatever. How do you stay motivated and not get stuck or break through a wall if you're ever like, damn it, day after day after day, you don't want to create any content? Yeah. Um, so I have a couple different strategies. The first, I have three. The first one is just like, I go, I understand myself well enough to know when I'm stuck. And if I know that okay. I'm stuck, I can move out of it. I, it usually happens in like three week phases where like for three days inside of those three weeks, I'll, I'll be, I won't yeah. have, I won't, won't be motivated. Won't Mine's have like creative three ideas days every four weeks. I yeah, totally so get it. That, that happens. And so I just kind of like recognize and stop beating my head against the wall when those happen and just go do something else. And I think that's one of the things that I've learned recently is just like, I know when I don't have it and I just do something else that I can do. Um, Smart. Then the next one is that because I stay in the work, like I built Facebook ads 30 minutes ago for a customer, I have a deep understanding of what's happening today. So I'm like, hearing objections from the CMO when I'm running ads, I'm, I'm running the ads, I'm getting the feedback, I'm looking at the data. And so I always have something to talk about because I'm doing what my customer would be doing. Um, and so I think that one's super interesting. I don't have to think about it. I just do it. And then the last one that, that has been working really well for me recently is that I just, um, if I don't have it, I go on a long run. Mm. So um, like a workout or a run. Yeah, work workout works too, but the run I think um, requires, especially like I'm doing like 10, 20, 20 mile type stuff. And it requires a different level of like mental capacity, I feel like. Like I wanted to give up after 0.6 miles, but I ran 20 on Saturday. And so like- Damn, um, do you yeah. always run 20? <laughs> Sorry? Do you, do you typically always run like super I've been, long? I've, I've been building up, but yeah, I usually do thir- like a half marathon or up. Um, wow. obviously I'll mix in short runs in the middle, but my long, my weekend long run is in that range. And, um, yeah, I just really, I, the next day I'm physically exhausted and mentally full of energy. And I just think that that, uh, it's been working for me. So whatever that is like, that's for me, but whatever it is for you, it could be going on a drive down the coast on a nice day. It could be doing something with your family. It, for me, it's right now it's running. It could be going to the mountain. You, you just need to figure out what it is for you. That's awesome, man. And then, you know, where does the number one place to get started with content creation and documentation and sharing for LinkedIn? Like if you had to boil it down to start right here, right this second. Yeah. The super fascinating thing I think for people is, is to, you don't need to look for a course to tell you what to do. You just need to look at the people that are doing it well and then follow them. Right. Smart. Like, just you can you can mold and replicate whatever someone else has already proven and then can iterate from there but like like for us um we like take i go in to an instagram story ad and i see a SaaS company that's advertising and i think it's great and i swipe up and i look at the landing page and i take note of the things that are good and the things that suck and i do that and i know that they paid an agency a hundred thousand dollars to figure that out already and i'm going to take the things that i like and i'm going to go and replicate it on my own like we don't need to reinvent Smart. the wheel here yeah, I love that. That's <laughs> awesome, man. And the last question, your favorite book. Um, I really, uh, lately, so this changes by the way, but lately um, I'm a big fan of the book called Mastery by Robert Greene. Okay. Um, he's an awesome writer, would highly recommend it. Um, it just basically will take you through the, the, the process through the eyes of other people that have mastered things like an artist or a you know, athlete or different things like that about the different phases of how to, how to become, uh, how to master a craft. 
and you can wow. find where you are in that different cycle. And there's a lot of places where it's like, I look back and they're like, you're going to feel this way during this period. Like you're going to want to give up. You're you like, you feel like you're already there, but don't be confused. You're not. Um, and you can look back and be like, okay, this is actually the phase that I'm in, which can then inform you to how to, how to keep going. I thought it was fascinating. Wow. That's amazing, man. Chris, where can the audience connect with you, follow you, learn from you for more? And I'm, I'm sure I know the answer. <laughs> so, so LinkedIn, Chris Walker is good. Also, I want to drop a plug here for uh, the state of demand gen podcast available on Apple and Spotify. We have amassed a very large audience, mainly focused on driving demand in B2B SaaS organizations. Um, CMOs give me uh, great comments on it. And I know a lot of people that send me messages that are like, Hey, I listened to your podcast for 20 episodes and then I got a promotion. And so, um, for those people looking to get better, especially salespeople listening to this, like over time, if you want to control your own destiny, you should figure out how to do marketing for yourself. Cause some marketing teams suck and you can close that gap on your own right now. And so there's some tips in there for everyone here. Awesome. Chris Walker, thanks so much for joining us. CEO of Refine Labs. Go connect, follow him on LinkedIn and check out the Demand Gen podcast of his. Thank you so much. Uh, this is an episode of Sales Secrets from the Top 1% where the world's best sales experts share their secrets to sales success. Make sure you smash the subscribe button, the listen button, whatever button there is in front of you. Hit it, comment, like, and uh, stay tuned on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, everywhere where there's content. We'll be doing these every Monday and Thursday. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you for listening to Sales Secrets with Brandon Bernanson. If you enjoyed the show, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button right now so you never miss an episode that drops on the daily. Your success is our success.